But a, a shout out to everybody with social anxiety. I kind of feel sorry for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. What's good? Welcome back to another episode of That Ain't It, which is a series on my channel where I make commentary on something that I came across on the internet and subsequently came to the conclusion that that ain't it. To freedom! Today we are going to talk about social anxiety because I recently came across a bunch of tweets and those were just not it. After this episode, be sure you check out the first episode of That Ain't It, where I talk about skin whitening ads and colorism in the Philippines. Summer Walker is a singer-songwriter from Atlanta who just blew up overnight. Um, she announced a tour. She did nine shows, I believe, and then just recently canceled the remaining shows she canceled the rest of the tour uh, due to social anxiety, and a lot of her fans were not very happy about that. Justifiably so. A lot of fans were also very disappointed when they met Summer Walker at her meet and greets because they described her as like distant or like she didn't really want to be there. And I can understand the frustration and disappointment of being a fan of someone and getting to meet them at their show at a meet and greet and them not being very like warm or very welcoming. I can totally understand that. And I think that fans are allowed to feel the way that they do about that because you know, they paid money, they had an expectation and it didn't meet it, whatever. I can totally understand the disappointment and the frustration. Now here's my issue with this whole situation. Summer Walker has been very open about her social anxiety. She has mentioned it multiple times on multiple occasions. So thanks. Um, look, I'm really freaking excited to be here, but I have social anxiety like a f motherfucker. So um, yeah, I'm freaked the hell out. I'm sweating. And I thought that because she was so open about it, that people would be like more understanding. But what ended up happening actually was that people started mocking her and her condition, just being mean for no reason. But there were also a few tweets of people who were not trying to be intentionally mean or like trying to intentionally mock her. They were just saying things that were coming from a place of ignorance. As someone with social anxiety myself, I completely understand where Summer Walker is coming from. And honestly, I sometimes forget how stigmatized like mental health conditions are in our culture and especially in black communities. It is not taken very seriously and with social anxiety in particular, we often conflate social anxiety with like being introverted or being shy or being nervous, which is very looked down upon in our very extroverted culture. Now, there was one very specific tweet that I came across that actually made me want to make this video, and this is what it said. We're not telling Summer Walker to do gymnastics, but can you at least act like how you do on social media, lamau? And after I read this tweet, that's what made me realize that y'all don't know what the f social anxiety is. <laughs> social anxiety is a chronic mental health disorder. It is not some personality quirk. It's not being an introvert. It's not being shy. It's not just like being nervous. You can literally be clinically diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. Now, social anxiety can affect people differently. Some people talk excessively when they have social anxiety. Some people like close themselves off entirely. There's also a huge difference between being nervous and having anxiety, okay? Having nerves before a job interview is completely normal. Like it's completely normal to be a little bit nervous before a job interview. But when those nerves prevent you from operating as yourself, that's when it becomes an issue. For those of you that don't know, I'm an actress and I just recently had um, a producer callback for a Netflix movie um, not too long ago and I met the director and the producers. Being nervous about something like this is completely normal. You know, you're in a room with very important people. It's like very normal to be a little bit nervous in that type of situation. However, when I got in the room, my neck literally locked up and I could feel my head shaking 
like this. Like that's literally how it felt. That is not just being nervous. My body was involuntarily being taken over by anxiety. I had no control over my body in that situation. Now that's what was happening inside of my body. That is how I felt, but maybe it didn't even come across to the producers or the director as me being nervous. I could have just looked completely calm and collected. I have no idea because I can only have my perspective. Maybe they couldn't even tell that I was losing my mind. On the outside, I could have looked very serene and like I knew what I was doing. But on the inside, it literally felt like the scene in Titanic where the Titanic is sinking. <laughs> Just absolute chaos. And that is how anxiety manifested in my body in that particular situation. For someone else, it could be that anxiety is making them talk a lot or like move around a lot. And that might look like an outgoing person for someone that, you know, talks a lot or like moves around a lot and is like very animated, but it could also be that they just have social anxiety and that is how it is manifesting in their body. People can have social anxiety and you probably won't even notice or like know about it because the way that we view extroversion and introversion and social anxiety and being shy or whatever is like this really weird mashup of non-reality. <laughs> like there is no singular way that social anxiety exists or looks like. Social anxiety looks like different things to different people. And this tweet is saying, well, why can't you just act like the way that you do on social media? Well, girl, cause the conditions are completely different. <laughs> like let's do some contextual analysis here. Why don't we? Okay, let's analyze some context. When you're posting a video on social media, it is just you and your phone and you're probably alone in your bedroom. That is inherently different than being on a stage by yourself in a arena or concert hall and having to perform in front of thousands of people for two hours. Like why would you even make that comparison? That is not common sense to me. <laughs> When I was rehearsing my scenes for my Netflix callback, I was alone in my living room and I was killing it. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. I was killing it, okay? But because the physical conditions of the situation changed and I'm now suddenly in front of very important people in a room that I've never been before, the way that I react in that situation is gonna be a little bit different. Wouldn't you say so? That's common sense to me. You can be outgoing on social media and have social anxiety. Hell, you can be outgoing in person and have social anxiety. It may manifest in your body differently than someone who is shy and has social anxiety, but social anxiety in of itself is not a personality trait. For Summer Walker, it's very clear to me anyway that social anxiety manifests in her body by closing herself off in public spaces. This is not just her being shy, this is her condition preventing her from being herself. It's a mental health disorder, it is not rational. And sure, there are ways that you can work with your anxiety to kind of make living a little bit easier, but that is usually a gradual process. Summer kind of blew up overnight. And maybe she wanted to go on tour because she wanted to face her anxiety. And you know, maybe she really thought that she could do it. Like maybe she genuinely believed that she could handle it. No one knows what they're capable of until they try it. And that goes for everyone. And I'm personally proud of her for trying because that shit is not easy. She kind of blew up overnight, so getting comfortable with performing 30 shows solo when you have social anxiety probably wasn't the most gradual process and it probably overwhelmed her. Even personally for myself, I have very gradual growth every year. I learn something new about my anxiety and my social anxiety every single year. And I learn about new ways to, you know, work with it, to how to handle it and things like that. But that gradual growth is not something that would have been afforded to me if I had just blown up overnight the way that she did. You know what I mean? I'm really proud of her for trying and it's really heartbreaking to see so many people talking about mental health, but then turning around and mocking someone that is just trying to live out their dreams. 
everyone deserves to live out their dreams. I'm not familiar with everything that she has done, but from what I have seen so far, she has been very open about her condition and she's been very vulnerable with what she experiences and people are just mocking her for it. No wonder people don't talk about this out in the open. Now, I do think that people with social anxiety should do things every day to make themselves a little uncomfortable so that they can gradually face their anxiety. And especially for people who are entertainment, like Summer Walker, people like me. Uh, I remember Bill Hader just did like, I think it was on Instagram, he like made a video about how he um, worked with his anxiety or like with his social anxiety because he was on SNL, which is live and he's a performer. Hi guys, uh, my name is Bill Hader and um, I, uh, since I was a very young kid, uh, had really bad anxiety. Um, my whole life. I think everyone with this condition should absolutely do something to better their situation because living like this is not the best, take it from me. <laughs> that is something that I have been working on ever since I found out that I had it and I've made some really, really great progress, but it was gradual progress. It did not happen overnight. And even now, I can wake up in the morning and go to a casting office that I've never been to before and audition in front of a casting director that I've never met before and be totally fine. Like I could kill that audition, but then I could go to lunch right afterwards and be too anxious to tell the waiter that they got my order wrong. Like, social anxiety is not rational. And we need to give ourselves space and leniency and time to grow. And we need to allow others time and space and leniency to grow. I would never tell someone who doesn't have the ability to use their legs to just get up and walk. So why would I tell someone with social anxiety, which is a mental health disorder, to just get up and perform a two hour show in front of thousands of people in 30 different cities? It's easy. I know, I know you can't use your legs, but like just walk, you know? <laughs> I know you have depression, but like just be happy. <laughs> It is not hard to open your mind and listen to experiences and circumstances and conditions that are different from yours. It is not difficult to respect other people's space and personhoods. No one ever gets paid to be mean to someone on the internet. Y'all are just doing that shit for free. Wasting all that time and energy just to be mean to someone on the internet and you're not even getting paid for it. You really hate to see it. It also doesn't cost any money to have empathy for another person. In fact, I think empathy makes you a smarter person. It makes you an insightful person. Empathy is the ability to think critically beyond yourself. It's the ability to understand and analyze context. That's literally what you're doing. People with mental health conditions are allowed to live out their dreams just like anyone else. They will experience and face adversity because of their condition, but it's not difficult to understand that they will need to navigate their dreams a little bit differently than you do. It is okay to let go of your entitlement in your consumption of art and entertainment based on the context and situation. It is okay to have more empathy. It is okay to be a smarter and better person. It's okay to be all of those things. But anyway, that's just my two cents on the situation. Um, in conclusion, I think in general, we just need to, you know, practice, have more empathy um, towards mental health conditions. And I don't think it's a good thing to be mocking people when they're very open about their mental health condition because that's what stops people from talking openly about them in the first place. They don't want to be mocked for it. <laughs> and it's crazy to me anyway that people are doing that for free, like not even being paid to do it. That's crazy to me. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to watch episode one of That Ain't It, where I talk about skin whitening ads and colorism in the Philippines. I will leave the link right up here on the description box down below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.